The second a server wipes in Rust, the race has begun. Players start fighting over resources, barrels, monuments, and even the land. It's arrows and spears flying everywhere, as other nakeds are fighting with rocks and torches on the beach. Is that what you want? Is that how you want to play the game? Or would you rather be in charge? I'm going to be teaching you about the nomad playstyle in Rust, covering all the benefits, the weaknesses, and the tools that exist in the game that can help you dominate a server without ever building a base. At least, not right away. Before we get into the video, I'm super close to 25k subs, so if you want to help me out and help you become a better Rust player, smash that subscribe button. First, as implied, we're not building a base. By not having to worry about farming resources or building, we're going to instead save a lot of time and energy to focus on gearing up and heading into tier 2 or tier 3 within the first few hours. Over the last couple of years, Rust has added many things to the game that have made playing as a nomad much easier. With the addition of safe zones like Outpost and Bandit Camp, players are given many tools in there to assist them in living without a base. First, by spawning into a server and F1 killing until you find a suitable spawn, you're going to want to plot the quickest path to Outpost. I will cover Bandit Camp later in the video as it is also incredibly useful, but Outpost is much easier and will save you some time and scrap farming. If you've loaded in quickly on wipe, my advice is to just run. Don't farm a single tree or node, instead focus on picking up loose resources that you're going to find along the way. If you are a little late to the server, or if it's incredibly chaotic, gather enough wood to make yourself a spear or a bow before carrying on. It's also incredibly useful to craft yourselves bags as you travel, just in case you do happen to die you're not going to spawn back all the way on the beach. Playing as a nomad, food is going to be incredibly high value, as you're going to come across it rarely, grabbing it early will save you a headache much later on. So if you do happen to see a river nearby or a forest with some mushrooms, make an effort to grab these on your way to outpost. Next to food, you're going to be looking for barrels, because you're going to need at least two rope as well as other components to scrap for resources. Gather all the barrels that you can see on your way to the safe zone and including in the safe zone, as you'll be able to farm with a rock without the turrets shooting you. If in your journey, while you're running to the outpost, someone decides they want to smack you in the head with a rock, just keep running. Don't engage, don't waste your time, don't fight them, just run. Eventually they will either give up, or you'll reach the safe zone. Either way, you you're going to save yourself that. time and possibly a reset. If you reach the safe zone and you still haven't gathered anything, you're probably doing it wrong. But thankfully, you can gather inside outpost, as long as you have a rock or a paddle, you're safely able to farm inside the safe zone, focusing on signs, trees, and even barrels on the outskirts of Outpost. Now that we're in Outpost, and you've gathered some components, recycle. Recycle everything, except two rope. This is going to result in a ton of cloth, some scrap, some frags, and even some high qual. At this point, we're going to craft our weapons, focusing on a crossbow and a nail gun, as they are the most useful early game items. If you need more scrap, Go farm more signs. If you need more metal, wood, or stone, use this vending machine. If you happen to be short on cloth, you can buy gloves at the back and recycle them, giving you a ton of cloth for just only 40 scrap. You should also keep any low grade that you acquire on your journey up till now and going forward. If you need food still, head over to the barbecue located in the back of Outpost, or send an order to Bandit Camp for some canned food. At this point, you should have yourself some basic clothing a nail gun, a crossbow, and ammo for both. I recommend about a stack each. You will also need a large amount of cloth, like 2 to 400. Next slap down a bag outside of the outpost on the side with the tunnels, and you're ready. Early game, the tunnels are one of the richest spots for components and even weapons. It can also give you some handy blueprints that you're going to need later on in your wipe. By carefully baiting and farming the tunnel dwellers to the back door, you'll be able to save yourself on bandages and reduce the likelihood that you get killed by an AI. Depending on your own skill, server pop, concerns of getting countered, you may want to press faster. The nail gun will come in handy for this as it can take them down fairly quickly. Trade-off being you're going to take more damage and go through more bandages. No matter how you do it, you're going to take damage, so ensure you're bandaging often and craft extras ready for yourself for later. You're going to want to stay at max HP in case a player comes down from all the noise. Quick reminder that the middle mouse button when used on an item in the quick craft menu will automatically start crafting 5 instead of 1 per click. This can be incredibly useful for spam crafting on the go with your favorite items. 
Once you've made your way through the tunnels and you've cleared out all the tunnel dwellers and looted all the boxes, you have two choices. You can either head back up and recycle and continue your adventure, or you can continue to the next station. Deciding that's going to be a mix of your own skill, how much cloth you have left, how much ammo you have left, and if you have enough for what you need. Now personally, my thing is, I'll look at it, do I have enough scrap for the weapons that I want to buy, or do I need to continue farming? You're going to be constantly analyzing which items you need to keep and which items you need to leave behind, because you're going to have limited resources and you're going to be going longer periods of time without recycling and not storing anything anywhere. You need to make quick decisions on what holds higher value. You do want to make sure you hold on to any 5.5 five or 9 mil that you find because you're going to need ammo later. Finally, whenever you're done farming, we're heading to Bandit. Here, we're going to be able to safely recycle again, sell any high qual we have, and a lot of the frags. You can always keep those for later if you're planning to build soon. I personally sell them, especially the high qual, as it gives you a lot of scrap early on. Next, we're going to be buying an M9, as well as either an M39 or an LR. If you have enough 9mm billets from your tunnel run that you feel comfortable, then you can skip this next step. If you do need more ammo, however, you can simply unload one of your bullets from the M9, head over to this research table, researching one of the bullets, purchase some grenades, recycle the grenades, and craft bullets at this workbench. Next, your 556. If you have enough from the tunnels to feel comfortable roaming, it's a good time to start roaming. It's early wipe, and you can probably catch more than a few farmers for an easy kill and easy loot. You have the guns. Who's going to stop you? If you need ammo still, or you're worried about your lack of meds, I advise heading to large oil. But Rex, I don't have cards. That doesn't matter. We're not going there to do the rooms. It would be really nice to do the rooms and to actually do large oil appropriately. However, our target is actually the scientists. You see, the scientists on large oil drop a large amount of components, but mostly ammo. You will get a lot of 5.56, a lot of 9 mil, and a few stacks of meds. Once you're on large oil, you're going to want to prioritize taking out the scientist with your crossbow and using the nail gun or the M9 to finish off the scientist. If you do get rushed, it is perfectly acceptable to quickly pull out that M9 and drop a scientist. It'll save your life and save your run. However, you do want to prioritize keeping ammo whenever possible, making sure to default run back to safe positions and take your time with the scientists. This is another great stopping point. At this point, I have ammo, I have meds, I have resources, and I have extra scrap. So at this point, I will either stash things or I will build myself a small base. However, if things slowed me down a little bit, I will wait a little bit longer in the ocean, either farming small oil or roaming looking for people farming in the ocean. The reason I do this and I stay on the water is I'm looking for cargo. When you don't have BPs on the server, cargo is a huge advantage granting you explosives, endgame weapons, attachments, armor, and really anything else you can think of. So for this reason, I really like to take that first cargo, and typically the most competition I'm going to have to deal with is SARS and Tommies. In order to take cargo solo and effectively, without getting countered, I make sure to prioritize keeping the scientists alive. Instead of them being my enemy, they can be my teammates. In order to do this, when I board cargo, I'm always popping bandages, the entire time. I will run straight to the back of cargo and head down to the bottom floor. Here I will kill only these two scientists. These guys can be a bit of a pain, you don't have to kill them, you can navigate without it, but it's just not worth leaving them alive usually, so I do usually get rid of them. Next, I'm going to loot all of the boxes. Cargo respawns the boxes as long as they're fully looted every time it spawns a new crate. This means if you get here for the first crate, you will get three times the crates. That's a lot of loot and really good chances Maybe of not. pulling some end game weapons. Once that's done and cleared out, I will head out to the top floor. Here I'm only going to kill the scientists that are directly in the middle top level of the boat, and only the scientists that are directly a threat to myself. I'm then going to position myself in the center front of the boat, closer to where the ladders are. This is going to allow me to be ready for if a player comes. The reason that I've left these scientists alive, especially these three scientists here, is because they will act as an early alert system. This means that if I'm down on the bottom of the boat looting, or if I'm just not paying attention, I will hear the scientists shooting as soon as they see a player. 
This also gives me the notification of which direction the player is coming from. This can give me the chance to prepare and get ready to shoot. Typically, I like to let the player actually board the boat. While it is a little bit more risky, it does mean you're going to usually get some guns, ammo, and mats, which can all be pretty useful. As long as you post up here in the middle and you've got your guards working for you, holding cargo, especially this early in the wipe, is incredibly easy. Once that's all done, load up your boat and head to the nearest lighthouse, ideally. If you don't have a lighthouse nearby, a harbor works too, but it's not nearly as secure. By going to lighthouse, you'll be able to recycle as well as guard your boat at the same time. This is incredibly important because you just don't have the inventory space. What I'll typically do is leave all of the things that I'm not recycling in the boat, unloading the guns and taking the ammo with me, head up and recycle while watching the boat and watching to make sure nobody else comes to lighthouse. Next, if we don't have a base already, go to your stashes, pick up your loot, or go kill a farmer, or even go farm a single tree. Either way, drop a box down, store your loot, farm a little bit more, and build a small base. If you click the card up in the corner right now, you're going to get a great solo design called the Keeper. This uses a hidden TC as well as hidden loot rooms combined with a bunker base in a very small form to give you the most protection possible. Alright, that's it. You got a base, you're way ahead, and you're ready to dominate the server. If you haven't already done so, smash that like button, click that subscribe button, and I guarantee that's going to reduce your sway and give you better shots. The only thing I'd like to mention is that this playstyle is typically carried out by only the most tryhard players, and it's most likely that you're going to be following the exact same path as someone else, or they're going to be following yours. Be vigilant, as the most likely thing that's going to end your nomad start is another nomad.